there's been so much news going on. I kind of feel as if this quantum development kind of got lost amidst all the COVID stuff and everything. But should we be paying more attention to this? So it sounds like something out of a movie, the threat of a bunch of human weapons with biologically enhanced capabilities. Pretty sure that's the plot line to Captain America. But the reality, we might be talking about Captain China. That's according to a new warning from the director of national intelligence about the threat from China. Chinese scientists have announced their development of the most powerful quantum computer in the world. It works 100 trillion times faster than the fastest supercomputers out there. President Xi Jinping has said research and development in quantum science is an urgent matter of national concern, and the country has invested heavily in this technology, spending billions in recent years. It has become a world leader in the field. This lab in the heart of San Francisco is revolutionizing a way to edit the building blocks of life, our DNA. To the untrained eye, it may not look like much, but this is now the world's most powerful computer. 20 years in the making, Zhu Zheng is the brainchild of China's top scientists, who are now asserting their dominance in the race for quantum supremacy. China intends to dominate the world economically, militarily, and technologically. They intend to be the world's superpower. Biotechnology in its military strategy in order to achieve its ambitions, he has warned that Chinese authorities have been conducting human tests on members of the People's Liberation Army. And it's trying to make them stronger through, uh, you know, gene editing. And that's just one of the ways that, uh, uh, you know, China is trying to um, essentially dominate the planet and set the rules in the world order and and why it's so important and people need to understand is this is an authoritarian regime it doesn't care about people's individual rights director of national intelligence john ratcliffe is sounding the alarm on the threat he believes china poses to the united states in a rare op-ed for the wall street journal ratcliffe called china quote the greatest threat to America today and the greatest threat to democracy and freedom worldwide since World War II. Earlier today, our Catherine Herridge sat down with Ratcliffe for his only network interview in which he accuses China of trying to steal American vaccine research. Talk about the earliest days of the pandemic. Does the intelligence show that the Chinese president made the call to minimize the threat of COVID-19. The intelligence shows that the Chinese Communist Party's senior leaders, including President Xi, were aware and lied to the rest of the world about what they knew and when they knew it about COVID-19. They made the conscious decision to shut down their economy, to shut down their country, travel in and out of Wuhan where this originated, but they allowed travel from Wuhan to the rest of the world. They knew that and they've taken advantage of that. What does the intelligence show about foreign efforts to steal COVID-19 vaccine research? Well, so that's, um, you know, adding insult to injury. It shows that uh, China is attempting to, has been attempting to um, access um, our research into COVID-19. So the pandemic that was created by China's actions, um, they've attempted to steal our research. Again, Catherine Herridge now to discuss her exclusive interview. She's a CBS News senior investigative correspondent and joins me from our D.C. Bureau. Catherine, welcome. Great to have you with us. So beyond China, what did Radcliffe say about election fraud and interference? Well, DNI Radcliffe leads the 17 intelligence agencies, and he has access to the most highly classified information that is held by the U.S. government. And he told CBS News that there was foreign election interference by China, Iran, and Russia in November of this year. And he is anticipating a public report on those findings in January. And he shared with us what they have seen so far. Does the intelligence show that any foreign adversary or criminal group had the ability to change the vote results? Not that we've been able to determine. Now, at this point in time, we're still in, uh, analyzing all of the intelligence. So when the president gives a 42-minute video on voter fraud allegations, is that intelligence coming from you? So, well, I can't tell you the specific information that I give the president, um, 
but voter fraud is not an issue for the intelligence community per se. That's a domestic law enforcement issue. Visible from the prompter. So what we heard from DNI Radcliffe was very consistent with the comments from the Attorney General Bill Barr to the Associated Press earlier this week that based on the review so far, they have not seen widespread, in his case, intelligence that would have changed the voting tallies in the end, Tanya. So despite what the president is saying publicly, Catherine, it's clear the transition is moving ahead. Uh, we know the GSA delayed President-elect Biden's ability to access key transition materials for about three weeks. Um, does Ratcliffe worry at all about what that meant for national security? DNI Radcliffe told us that he believes that they are actively sharing high level intelligence with the Biden team, and he does not believe that this delay has put the Biden team at any disadvantage. Here's what he told us. To be clear, former Vice President Biden is getting the PDB, the president's daily brief. He's getting access to all the same intelligence that President Trump is receiving. He's getting all of the same intelligence. He's getting full security briefings from my office, which briefs the president, now uh, briefs uh, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, they're receiving full classified briefings. Have they asked for any specific topics? They have, but I won't uh, divulge the specific uh, requests that have been made, but we've afforded um, every request. And we asked DNI Radcliffe what his message was to the Biden team about China, and he urged them to see it for the threat that it is. He emphasized that he's taken the last six months to reallocate resources within the intelligence community away from Russia, away from counterterrorism, to focus on China. And he is urging this incoming team not to switch that back, Tanya. Catherine Herridge, thank you so much. It comes little more than a year after Google unveiled Sycamore, their own quantum computer. Google researchers uh, have achieved an incredible breakthrough in quantum computing. Their machine needed seconds to perform tasks which conventional systems would require thousands of years to do. The Chinese team say their light-based technique is 10 billion times faster than Google's. Um, it's the first time, or actually the second time to be exact, that we have a quantum computer, a prototype quantum computer, clearly outperforming classical computers. First time was last year in the Google Labs in Santa Barbara, and this is the second time using a very different technology based on photons that a similar experiment has been made. So I was somewhat skeptical about this claim, but when I started poking around, I found that private uh, American military experts in the, in the think tank world have actually studied this issue and written about it, and they have found that there is ample evidence that uh, Chinese scientists are very interested in applying biotechnology to the battlefield. The CRISPR tool is generally confined to sort of uh, trying to cure genetic mutations and disease, and, and try to improve plants. Uh, the, no one understands the implications of messing with human genes. And so For the first time, scientists have used the gene editing technology known as CRISPR inside a patient. The groundbreaking procedure was performed in Oregon. The human genome is a complex code of three billion letters. It turns out that disease can be caused by just one letter on a sheet like this out of five million pages being wrong. And that's enough to cause human disease. And so now for the first time we're able to read the whole book, find the one letter that's wrong, and now with CRISPRs go in and correct it. That's a revolution. The potential is limitless. Very interesting. I'm going to turn to Alex. Uh, the Chinese government has funneled a lot of money into scientific research. Why is that? Well, look, this is part of a much broader uh, techno-nationalist um, approach to, to advancing uh, you know, Chinese interests when it comes to economics, national security, obviously geopolitics. Today, the German Research Center for Artificial Intelligence is celebrating its 30th anniversary. The center is now the largest research facility of its kind in the world. 
It has created more than 90 spin-off companies and is also involved in numerous cooperative research projects. The centre stays focused on the future and the risks that are involved in the development of AI, including the use of smart weapon systems and the misuse of sensitive personal data. The U.S. takes a pretty relaxed approach to this situation, China even more so, but the dangers are definitely there. For example, what if populism continues to spread? Anyone can use this technology to their advantage. When we were just starting out, we kept trying to find a single algorithm that would mirror the human thought process. That was a spectacular flop. You can't reduce human thought to a single pattern. And the more I work with AI, the more I respect human intelligence. I've changed my attitude.